There will be people who are born out of wedlock. It's not their fault, but they were born out of wedlock. God said, don't bring them in. Don't bring them in. Now, spiritually, if in your family somebody was born like that or you're born out of wedlock, you will have this sense of lacking intimacy with God. You have this sense of uh, you're looking forward for tomorrow, it's so beautiful, you know, you're happy about that, but to enjoy God in the present, listen, it doesn't last long, it's too short, and then you slump back and feel heavy. You know, because spiritually, this is the past and curse. You know what? Because somewhere, somehow in your family, or probably you, you were born before the wedding. Or your parents didn't marry at all. Now, God is saying, I'm, I want to deal with that. Because remember, it is God who initiates you to come to Him. Jesus' death on the cross has already established that. That's no longer allowed. You know, this pastor thing is gone. I want to deal with you to come to me. These are the symptoms. There will be guilt, low self-esteem, this is an attitude of disqualified. I can't do it. I can't do it. I, I can't let somebody else do it. And he's able to hope for the future but feel sad about the present. Now, we don't put sad about the present. He can hope for the future, but the present can enjoy this. This symptoms, when we believe, will disqualify, self disqualify person from inheriting from the Lord. He will not enjoy what the Lord is telling for her. So that's the, uh, one of the spiritual uh, curses that happen to a people. The truth is in, in Jeremiah 5 1 5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. Did you see that? That was actually love you. And in Psalms 139, verse 14 and 16, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Your eyes saw me, my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to me. You know, Jephthah has a problem like this because he was born out of wedlock. You know, actually born from a prostitute. But eventually God actually brought him over. So spiritual areas of curses. A religious spirit. I know there's no religious spirit here. This is the Pharisee kind. This are, uh, how do you know if you have a religious spirit? When you're judgmental, you come in here and start judging me. Okay, they're not doing blah, blah, blah. When you're feeling self-righteous, I'm better than this person. And you have a religious pride. I, I pray a lot. You know, I don't get answers to prayer, but I pray a lot. <laughs> Probably you should pray less. <laughs> <laughs> critical, critical attitude. Ah, how come they're saying so loud? How come they're saying so slow? Some of them, you know, what's that? Legalism. Perfectionism and being intolerant. Division. This way, oh, I'm supposed to say that I like him, I like him better, I like him like that. Error in doctrine, uh, doctrinal error, I hope you don't have that. Unbelief. Doubt. I believe it's when the Bible said, some people are having the form of godliness but denies its power. You know, you talk about God is great and everything, but when God is saying, I'm challenging you to know, my power, like, let's just talk about it. I don't like the power. Doubt. Confusion. That's what I'm talking about. You know, you have a, 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 a relationship. Argumentativeness. Oh man, this person, you can talk to him all day. He will always be. False holiness. Salvation by work, guilt, condemnation, fear of losing salvation, fear of God, which is an unhealthy fear. A uh, fear of scared, oh, God doesn't like me, and things like that. These are religious people, but they are within us. You know, and sometimes it comes on us. You know, it doesn't mean that you own the Holy Spirit, but occasionally they will come on you. You need to recognize that and rebuke that. Next area of curses will be on health. Illness may be brought on by idolatry and disrespect of God, or the God of Israel, or a contempt on Israel. Remember? When when uh, when um, Egypt when Israel left Egypt, look at uh, Deuteronomy seven fifteen in page number thirteen. The Lord will keep you free from every disease. He will not inflict on you the horrible diseases you knew in Egypt, but He will inflict them on all who hate you. In twenty twenty seven, the Lord will afflict you with boils of Egypt and with tumors, festering sores, and each from which you cannot be cured. What did the Egyptians do that they earned it? You have to look back, you know, because there are specific diseases and curses specifically mentioned from people, people kinds. And 
on this kind, it was specific for Egyptians, the tumors, the boils, the skin diseases, you know, the question is, why? What, what did the Egyptians do? How come they earned this? <clears throat> what, what was the sin of the Egyptians? The sin of the Egyptians, if you would look at this, was this. They were idolatrous, they did not respect God. They hated Israel. You see that? Israel's, God said, let my people go so that they don't worship. No, you're not worshiping anywhere else. Stay here. Or you can go but just the men. Leave your animals. Or you can go but come back. You know, a lot of, a lot of stuff. And God is saying it is because of idolatry. Remember when the uh, Ark of the Covenant was brought to the, uh, one of the towns of uh, the Canaanites? And they had to let go of the Ark of the Covenant because they started growing something? They started growing tumors or hemorrhoids. So if you would look at that, actually those were, the, those were the scriptures laid out in the Bible and they were they have reasons. Skin diseases, tumors, hemorrhoids, uh, what else? A boils, festering sores, and each that cannot be cured. It all goes back to idolatry, which is demon worship. And if you have that, you have that in your family. I know in in, in here I can't believe this. People come in every like every six months being cut up open for your pizza. Like, yeah, I had them here yesterday, I have them today, I have them here. Like, goodness gracious. You you attracted all the boils? Like probably if you talk to these people in their lineage, there's like idolatry. Because how much the Lord is it? It's not that the Lord sent it over, but because when you are out of the protection of God because you went to idolatry, you just allowed yourself to be subject to this. Remember when when Israelites were beaten by the snakes? The Bible said the, the snakes came and beat them. The, you know, you have a picture like probably snakes came from the mountain and started biting them. No. In the desert there, there's a lot of snakes. But when they were following the Lord, the snakes cannot come to them. But when they started complaining, the Bible said they were starting complaining, the snakes came and started biting them. When they were out of obedience, the protection was lifted up, the snakes came in. The same thing. When you are out of the protection of God, you are, you know, it's free for them to do something for you, something on you. And that's what happened there. So what we're going to do is we'll look back in our, in our history, in our history, our parents or whatever. We are going to ask for forgiveness on that and the Lord will up and you will see healing. Amen? The next curse will be, oh, another one, Deuteronomy 20, 22. The Lord will strike you with wasting disease, with fever and inflammation, with scorching heat and drought, with blood and mildew, which will plague you until you perish. This is like a fungal disease. Now, you put all the cream already, you can put it, that thing, that thing won't go away. You know, what about my potato peeler? Just peel it off. How did that go? It's just a wasting disease, like a, a lot of inflammation, rayuma. All oh, my legs are swelling because of the weather. Oh, you think it's the weather? Really, it's the weather? You know, whatever it is, it, I could tell a storm is coming. <laughs> well, we have live report here from uh, Channel 7. We're going to talk to the knee of this lady. <laughs> That's not the weather. There's something wrong with your lineage. Maybe I can do something else. Okay? Thirdly, we'll be economic curse. <clears throat> Let's go to the The curse of toil and sweat coming from sweat like blood. Remember, uh, Genesis said in 317. And to the man he said, since you listened to your wife and ate from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat from the, the ground is cursed because of you. All your life you will struggle to scratch a living from it. The ground was cursed because of disobedience. The, the, this is economic, it's economic problem. This is when you can see actually people working so hard and not getting enough. The curse of toil and sweat coming from such like blood, the sin of irresponsibility and irresponsible for father or fathers, and no Christian father in the home. And the people that are under the saya. In the family history, you are under the saya. Now, I want you to look at the Genesis. What was the, what was the reason the ground was cursed? It's all because they because uh, they disobeyed. Yeah, no, 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 let's let's look at it really. The curse was this. Because Adam, the Bible says, since you listen to your wife. No. I want to talk to the man. The wife can step outside now. <laughs> this is what God said. Because you listen to your wife 
and ate from the tree whose fruit I command you not to eat, the ground is cursed. Because you listen to your wife. No, no, the problem is, no, no, I'm not saying you do not listen to her. You can listen to your wife. Because sometimes they can become really. <laughs> no, go ahead and listen to your wife. But what he's saying here is this. Assume the position if you're the boss, be the boss. God said you are the head of the family. If you do not assume the position of being the head of the family, something happens. If the communication flows from the father, from God the Father to the Father, and you're not communicating with the Father, the wife will hear something else. I'm talking about Christian family here. Of course, unbelieving family is another dynamics, you know. But what God is saying, in the establishment of the family that I have established, I have blessed from heaven. I have placed the father to be the head. And one way to prosper is then be the head. Call the shots because that's how the Lord wants it. Now how is this uh, how is this actually dealt with? In Luke chapter 22 verse 44, the Bible, this one the Bible said, And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. This was when Jesus was where? In the garden of Gethsemane. Where was the curse uttered? In the garden of you see that? God was to put it to parallel. Curse was mentioned in, in the garden, and the solution was, mentioned, was, was fixed in the garden. And the Bible said, oh, the, the ground will produce thorns for you. And what happened to Jesus? They made a crown of thorns, put it on his head, so the blood would come up. The ground was cursed to be unproductive. And then it says that the ground will produce thorns. Aside from being cursed to be unproductive, when it produces something, it produces something bad. So Jesus, while he was in the garden, he actually sweats of blood to neutralize the curse on the ground. And then he actually had that thorn placed on his head to neutralize the fruit of the ground. Can you see that? Because all in all, God wants us to have the benefit, the blessings of Abraham. Can you see that? All his suffering has a meaning. Oh, the, the blood of the Lord Jesus was, was shed on the cross. No, really. He started in the garden. And then he was beaten up. For what? For your healing also. Of course he was crucified. He was stabbed him and there's the blood. There's more blood show, shed there, but you have to go back again. The garden. God, Jesus neutralized that. So, we can see the fruit of the, of the, the fruit of the first ground, which was, what, what, which was the thorn was placed on his head, as a crown, tearing his flesh, allowing blood to flow. This brought the cure to the plant. No more thorns, but real fruit. Therefore, we will labor, but not sweat. You know, while I was here earlier, the word of God to me was, without labor. Easy. If you notice that in your Christian life, it's hard. You're carrying some heavy stuff. Put it down, because Christian walk is easy. If you are working so hard that you're pleasing God, you're doing it wrong. Because Jesus said, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. If you are doing something that probably you're hearing from a religious spirit, it's beating down on you, they stop, you know. Again, how do you actually neutralize your economic curse? Proverbs 13, 22. A good man lives an inheritance to his children's children, but the sinner's wealth is laid up for the righteous. Can you see that? How do I overcome this toil of, of labor and sweat? Know that Jesus died and he went to man and said, yes, I did he has an inheritance for you, so you don't, have to try, uh, you don't have to labor for that. You just have to receive the inheritance of the Lord because it is yours. He actually died so that you might have it. Just so you know, if you, know, if you haven't heard that, he died. And it says in here, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for you. You start calling on to that. So inheritance is obtained by the death of a relative when Jesus died. He was a good man. Praise God. He left you and I an inheritance so great that it will spill over to the next generation. Hallelujah. The Lord did not just heal the land and the product of the land. He also left us an inheritance. The inheritance is the cure for the toil and sweat. Number five. I think this is the last one. The Lord is about family. He instituted it, blessed it, and laid upon the family the seeds of the plan of God. In the families where the inheritance, the, where the innocents, innocents are born and reared, they will be transformed into families. 
values of learning that part in family. Jesus was born in a family, and we accepted him. When we accepted him, we